Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this woman walking with an umbrella on an autumn day. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in chat today, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Right. Hey guys, glad you decided to stop by and hang out with us on a Saturday. No, it's probably got... Or Sunday. True. If you're true, in Australia. Depending on where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> true that. <laughs> uh, we're going to be painting this straight through live. So um, we kind of talk about all kinds of stuff. <laughs> if you're new to our channel, mm -hmm. hope you like it. Subscribe and come back. Um, but uh, it's a lot of fun, I think. And um, we're going to be using a 9 by 12 inch Frederick's canvas board today. This is a mixed media canvas board. I haven't done anything to it except for prep it with my drawing. Um, our colors are going to be burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow light, uh, Indian yellow hue, cadmium orange, cadmium red light, quinacridone magenta, unbleached titanium, thalo turquoise, uh, you could use a thalo green instead, and then unbleached titanium, titanium white. And I'm going to go ahead and put out, I forgot to put out a little bit of glazing mm -hmm. liquid, so I'm going to do that. I always get this little film. There we go, just a little bit. That'll just help if I'm doing any washes or anything, I can add. And then just make sure you spray your can your paints with a water bottle of some sort as you work. That'll help keep them moist. Um, you're going to want some sort of a scruffy brush for our foliage. So uh, you could use a sponge. Um, we're going to get into some smaller spaces here. So I'm going to even grab a little bit smaller one even. So I've got three sizes, 5 8 3 8 and, th and 3 16 inch Deerfoot stiplers. Um, I've also got my blenders. Those are also kind of scruffy. Those will work for some foliage. Um, and then you're going to want kind of a largish brush for um, some of the flat areas here and then a smaller round for some details, especially in the umbrella and thing. And I've also got a angle brush for that. So quarter inch angle. These are all Princeton brushes. My brush, my phone is blowing up here. Sorry, forgot to mute it. Please hold. <laughs> okay, mute. there we go. The joy of doing this live. <laughs> And then I've got a fan brush, possibly going to use it in here for some of that. And then if I need to do any um, finer branches and things, I'm not going to, I'm going to simplify this a lot because there's a lot going on in this, but um, I'm going to try to kind of break it down so that it's a little bit simpler um, for us to work with. And I'm probably going to end up draw, painting over most of my drawing because I'm going <laughs> to do... Um, some of these areas just kind of a long ways. But um, before we start, I wanted to talk about the drawing a little bit. Um, when you've got a perspective like this, looks like the cameraman was crouched down, so his perspective was right on her bo booty. And um, that is going to be our focal point there. <laughs> he must, Mark must have been taking this photo. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Only um, if it was you. <laughs> Only if it was me. Good, good, good answer. I know. <laughs> I haven't been married 33 years for no reason. <laughs> True that. Um, so you can see how all, uh, oh, maybe <laughs> all of the um, trees and everything are going to line up with that. So it really doesn't matter, you know, where you're starting from, but um, just kind of pick a point and then make sure that all of your lines are converging onto this point when you've got this one point perspective type of deal. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get going here. So I'm going to just go ahead and paint back to front. So this farthest area back here is our light. Um, it's got some light in it. I'm going to get a little bit of blue with my white. Lots of white, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of burnt umber, and that will kind of tone it down, make it kind of more gray. And I think I'm, yep. So it should be fairly close to the canvas color. And I'm going to go ahead and do it on this side too, even though this side is a little bit um, darker in our photograph. I'm going to just go ahead and go over all of this. That is a little bit too dark still. I'm going to go 
You can go over your trees or you can kind of do like I'm doing, kind of go between them. There we go. But we've got kind of a plane right here that's our horizon line. So we're just doing just above that with this. That's where the rain mainly falls. In Spain. In the plains. Right. Spain. <laughs> <laughs> As a my fair lady, I should have. We could have. We could have quote, asked the audience. Oh, that yeah. would have been a good <laughs> stump the audience with Mark's obscure references. See, we'll see who's paying attention. <laughs> All right. <laughs> At least you were. I was. Yes, and I'm going to just feather this up a little bit. I've got a line of foliage that's going to be the underside of our trees that we're seeing that's coming down, but there's a little bit of this peeking through the branches here and there. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of flip up, make sure that I've got a little bit of this coming up above where that is going to be. So that when I do my foliage, I've got a little bit of this blue sky peeking through, and then we're going to use it in the middle here and it makes this kind of V shape right in here. So this V and this V are going to really push that perspective. So make sure that you're doing it both places. It's going to make this look much farther away in the distance by doing that. Okay, a little bit back here, but then mostly it's just right in this middle part and it's very close to white, so it's not, not a whole lot going on. All right, there we go. Getting, I'm just going to use this and add a little bit of my turquoise and a little bit of my yellow oxide. Make a light green. And that's going to be my distant ground that I'm seeing behind these trees. So the one the ground in front of the trees is not getting getting sunlight, so it's darker. But there's just a little bit of this peeking through back here that we're seeing and then right about in here it kind of disappears. And you can get a little bit of yellow oxide and just kind of tap it where they meet. There's some bushes and things back here. She's in the kind of the corner of my brush and trying to get it fuzzy there we go and then on this side we've got a little bit more of the sunlight showing through so I'm gonna get a little bit of the burnt umber and just kind of tap in right here where that line is and right about here it starts to just kind of meet up with our with our um, tree line because this is the you know, the horizon line is right here. It's going to go all the way across. So, if you did a straight line across here, you can see how it goes across there. Let me bring this up just a little bit. Okay, and then using that light green. I'm going to get a little bit more of the white and just pull down with that. I went over my tree trunks, but right here just so that I got a straight line. Okay, and so right about even with the tree trunks is where this is going to change color. There is a kind of a lighter spot right there, so I'm going to kind of go along and lighten it up just before that darker line right there. And let's go ahead and lighten this up too, just a little bit. Okay, there we go. So having this nice pale color back here, it's going to make this all kind of darker and more moody in the middle here. It's going to really create a nice atmosphere for us all right and then I'm going to 
go ahead and do the pathway. I'm going to get some blue, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of my burnt umber. So probably two parts blue to one part brown. I'm going to add a little bit of this green here. I haven't cleaned out my brush. Just going to use it. Get a little bit more white here. Go right up to the horizon line. And if you're doing this, probably what you want to do is not try, not transfer on your girl at first. Just do the trees and the road and then transfer on your woman. But I already got mine on here, so I'm just going to kind of do my best to go around her. And if I need to redraw parts of it, I will. Okay. Pick up water every now and then. When I pick up water, I'm just picking up just the corner. I don't need a ton of water. You can use your paper towel to kind of regulate how much is on your brush, too. But there we go. Okay, so this foreground is going to be darker, and it's picked up a little bit of that green, which I don't mind. It's fine. Mainly just trying to cover the canvas here. If you thin it out too much, it'll be transparent, which then you're going to have to do more layers so don't thin it out too much sorry okay let me move there we go thanks you gonna take my job too camera lady <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna put in some darker edges right here and just using the, mixing up a little bit darker color, using the brush and just kind of going side to side here to create these darker places and then just brushing it into that wet paint. If your paint's dry, that's fine. You can still do this, you might just Get a bit of the lighter gray and come in the opposite direction with it. We'll probably do a few more layers on here. Kind of the area right in front of her is a little bit lit up. Make sure that that's a little bit lighter there. not a straight line it's kind of the zigzag line but it all still kind of goes in that same direction so it doesn't have to be like a straight straight line to follow that perspective it's gonna has to get gradually smaller in the distance all right there we go what's left on my brush here. Okay. What you don't want is like this little halo. If you're painting around here, it's easy to get this kind of line around the body. So I'm just making sure that I don't have that by kind of brushing over that whole area there. All right, I need to leave that because it's starting to dry actually pulled up a little chunk of paint right there. Okay, that looks good. All right, so one more thing to do before we start. Let me get a kind of a 
medium round. Let's get out one. This is a two round, that's all right, maybe either one. I'm gonna get a little bit of this color that we were using for the walkway here and use it for some distant trees back here. So they're gonna go right kind of in between, just seeing a few little tree trunks. And if they're too noticeable, you can kind of tone them down with little white but these ones closer to us are going to be a little bit bigger and just make sure that you're making sure your paint is thin and bring these tree trunks up to where this um, yellow is going to be coming down over them so they will be disappeared back in here and get some yellow. Tap in the bottom of those trees to kind of push them back. Over here, same deal. A bit of white, a little bit of that. And if you're, again, if they're not going on really smoothly for you, then just add a little bit of water to your paint. It'll help that paint. And then just tap in along the bottom of them to kind of Give them a place to live. Okay, that looks good. Very faint. All right, now I'm going to get a little bit the smaller of the deer foot stipplers, and we're gonna start putting in our yellow under under story. Here, so and you're under. keeping the deer foot dry. Dry, yes, I haven't wet it. A little bit of the yellow, a little bit of yellow oxide, tiny, tiny bit of burnt sienna. And I'm going to go right up to where these trees start. So just down here, start tapping over the Yeah, there and so I've got a color that is it's not my lightest yellow, but it's pretty close It's it's pretty light and if it's not covering enough you can get a little bit of white But I'm going to be going almost straight this way It's just kind of like a bump up from the oopsie. I got that wet right there while it was drying gonna have to let it dry completely see how it's just resisting ha having any paint that's because it it lifted so when that happens you just kind of have to let it dry man it looked like you didn't even plan that to happen good job i didn't oh you didn't no. <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll just leave that So how are you doing today? Doing good. Yeah. Doing good. It's a Saturday. It's nice. Got it my is. honey home. Mm -hmm. My son Spencer is here. It's a good day. <laughs> I was telling Mark, it's like we're I'm having serious empty nester syndrome mm -hmm. lately. It's like just out of nowhere, you just cry, you know. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's like really? Uh yeah, it's just think about my kids and then cry, you know, yeah. So our youngest went off to college this, 
Christmas fall. And yeah, it's been uh, interesting. <laughs> Got a little bit of turquoise and my burnt sienna here to make a little bit of a green. I'm going to go just darker, just right up on under some of these. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been interesting. I really didn't expect it, but I was telling Mark, I was like, you know, it's just it would be easier to say goodbye to them if they weren't so awesome. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they were a little, you know, what's then mm -hmm. I wouldn't be missing them mm -hmm. so bad. <laughs> it's like you get them to where you're like, I really like you, and then they leave. <laughs> Not that I didn't like them when they were younger, but, you know, when they're younger, you're having to run around and take care of them all the time, and they're very demanding, and, you know, you're tired, and it's not... Just when you got them doing dishes and laundry. Exactly. Then they leave. Exactly. Yes. It's like, what the heck? Wait a minute. I lost all my free labor. It's not fair. No, it's not. I'm going to have to hire somebody now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God Walmart delivery started, right? You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, can you pick up some stuff on the way home? Like sure. A, yeah. <laughs> All right. So just going through here and adding this on both sides here. Again, it's mainly you just want a little bit of a contrast. So um, whatever... Whatever you're going to be doing in this upper trees, you're going to just want a little bit of a contrast so that you can see that this is kind of underneath. And, of course, we're going to be putting, you know, our tree trunks in, too, that'll help push that perspective back. But so I'm kind of doing like this. These, This is all going to be kind of in front of all this. I'm not really seeing any of this, but you could bring it up if you wanted to. But... Um, and then we'll somewhere in there. Okay. And then over here, it's a little bit lighter. And a little bit more sparse. There we go. And this will really help us when we put our tree trunks in and rest the rest of the thing. It'll make this... These tree trunks look farther away. This kind of grounds them a little bit. Okay, looks good. So this is the this is these trees. That's just the back side of them or the underside of them that we're seeing because the perspective has dropped so low. If the perspective was up higher, we would only you know see the bottoms of them kind of in a in an angle. Um, we wouldn't really see much of this bottom part or the back part of the tree or the under part of the tree. But this perspective makes it nice. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. With that, let's go ahead and use this. I'm gonna maybe add a little bit of yellow oxide to it, and I'm just going to use the tip of it and actually gonna switch, I think, to this brush, it'll be easier. This is the quarter inch blender, and Get some burnt sienna. Kind of right under the trees, there's some of that burnt sienna color. And then this yellow. So this should fill in everything but the tree trunks on these. And where the green and the and this meat just kind of fuzz over it a little bit so that it kind of blends into that green a little bit. Get a little bit of burnt umber. 
And just right here, I'm going to tap in. side. I'm going to go ahead and just use the darker color. Burnt umber here. I'm do a little bit more burnt umber on this side too. A little bit darker. Right where it meets the road. Because right here, I'm going to zoom in right here. See, I've got an area where you can see the road underneath that. So I don't want that. So I want to make sure that my dark is going over that and covering that up enough that you're not seeing the road um, peeking through. Okay. Do that here, and I'm going to make the road darker too, right there, so that where they meet, they're the same color, and then they gradually change color going out. Makes sense. I think so. Could you express that <clears throat> either using Excel or a mathematical formula? <laughs> that make it easier for you to understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot to bring my Xbox to work though this week. <laughs> What's it? You're bringing your Xbox to work week? Well, that you should know, be a thing. You you can now do Excel <laughs> on Xbox, so. Oh, yeah. that's right. I heard about that. Only because you told me. Because I... He was like, this must be heaven. Exactly. I posted that on Facebook. <laughs> this is what heaven Using is like. some green here. <laughs> With my burnt umber uh, in my brush still, so... Uh, turquoise and a little bit of that Indian yellow hue. And it's not as green on this side. And another thing I've got to bring up, I just, I'm besides myself, that we're living in such wonderful times mm -hmm. <clears throat> that the toilet paper now has wavy cuts on them, so they tear so much nicer. Really? You haven't noticed that? I haven't. It's like... I've Is dreamed a of a day like this. Charmin thing? I don't know. Toilet papers? I don't know, but I just noticed that it was like wavy cut. And when you... Interesting. You know, separate them. Like you're not tearing tear. off half a piece or an edge or something. It's... Interesting. That was yeah. never like... that. That's a first world problem if I ever heard one. Yeah, but whoever came up with that, they deserve a raise. <laughs> a promotion. A little bit of lighter yellow here. A little bit of yellow oxide in my <laughs> cadmium yellow light. Maybe a little bit of Indian yellow hue. And I was tapping off. So mainly I just want kind of a nice transition between my di my distance and this foreground area that's lighter. And I don't want any real obvious weird line. So this is definitely too dark back here, so I'm gonna kind of lighten that up. Really should kind of get lighter-ish as it goes away from us. So. Once this is down, we can kind of adjust the values a little bit, but that looks good enough for now. All right, this is dry enough too, so we can go ahead and put in our tree trunks. 
that'll help us kind of know where to put our greenery. So I'm going to use this brush. This is my one round. And I'm going to use my burnt umber and some blue, dream blue, maybe a little bit of turquoise. So they're kind of a dark brown green color. Laughing at. Somebody's like that, but that water spot is just making me crazy. <laughs> and so, like, this is my patience. If I was painting this right now, I'd just keep going over that spot over. <laughs> over. <laughs> okay, let's fix it. <laughs> I feel you. I've been there. I'm getting some burnt umber here. A little bit of that ultramarine blue. It's dry enough now. We can go over it. I'm going to have to add a white. The white is the key because the white will help it cover and make it more opaque. If I don't add white, both of those colors are transparent. So we'd just be going over a transparent uh, you know, area with uh, that. It wouldn't cover. So that white, the little touch of white will help make it opaque and cover it up. Boom. Done. Trust me, if you don't add the white, you will be going over that and over that and it'll get frustrating and you'll be like why is this not covering because it doesn't you're using transparent colors it's not gonna <laughs> and because you've got a light spot with dark around it if you go over it with transparent you're gonna see that light spot through it your areas are around it are gonna just get darker and your middle part will get darker but they won't get darker at the same rate does it make sense um so you got to add that white so that you're you're covering over the dark areas too around it. All right, gonna use some white with my gray hair. Might as well, let's just go ahead and work on this. Really didn't mean to get it that dark, that light right there. I want that area back here dark, actually. So just let's go ahead and use the glaze. I'm trying to kind of add a fairly good amount of paint on here so that I can push it around where I want it to go. And I'm using the three eighths inch blender because it's got it's the stiffer bristles. It's a, it'll really help push that paint around. I'm using my all my tree color up here. So I want right where that brown comes out. I want to darken that up on my road. Bring that dark out a little bit. And again, I know I've got my my thing angled so that I can do this, but I'm keeping my lines straight when I'm doing this. I'm going back and forth straight. If you get it in an angle, it'll kind of throw things off. So just make sure you're kind of going back and forth horizontally. It's okay if it arcs a little bit, like there's a little bit of a curve up here, but you don't want a noticeable angle because that'll just throw everything out. It just doesn't work that way. So, all right, getting a little bit of the, let's go ahead and get some unbleached titanium and add that to this. We'll give it a, like a little bit of a warmer tone. And like right across here, right about at her waistline, there's like a light area that crosses in front of her. there and then another one that's right in front of her legs and sunlight's coming through those trees and it's not a not solid so it's got some dappled light there we go pretty Yeah, 
And then as it goes out here, it's going to get darker. So there'll be some highlights, but they'll be darker highlights. They won't be as bright. That middle, keep your brights right in the middle here. It's a little bit brighter. The sunlight must be coming this way just slightly because the shadows are kind of darker behind and to this side of her just a little bit. So I'm getting a little bit of that darker color. And right there, there's not a really heavy shadow on, on here though, so you don't have to do too much. Just a little darkening right there. Right, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, make sure that you don't have like a halo around her. So if you've got some area that doesn't work, or just make sure you go across. Okay, there we go. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and do just a little bit more right here. I see like an area of white that kind of comes and leads the eye this way. So I'm going to go from that light area right there and just kind of come across and down. Zigzag it that way. Okay, draw the eye down. I like how she's kind of disappearing, kind of very ghostly. Uh -huh. For this time of year, so good, good touch. Yeah. All right, so back to the tree trunks here. I've had this paint in my brush for too long. Hopefully, All right? Okay, I'm gonna have to mix up a lot more because I used a lot of this for my my roadway. So kind of equal parts, blue, brown, green, there, turquoise. Maybe a little bit more on the brown side. And add some water to it so it'll flow. And all of these colors are fairly translucent, so I'm gonna add just a tiny touch of the unbleached titanium back here. That'll also help me see what my under color is. And I think I might, let's go ahead and add a little bit of burnt sienna. That'll give us a reddish tone to our tree trunk. That'll be pretty. Okay, very nice. Okay, so our trees actually don't start until about right in here. Let's see where her edge of the umbrella is, right underneath the edge of that umbrella. So this is where our tree trunks start. Way back here. And again, let's keep in mind this. So we don't want to go up uh, your I'm you're too zoomed in, hun. Thanks. Well, we don't want to go um below that. So we want to go all the way up to this line here and over it. Okay for our tree trunks and then that way they'll so go on up and I came down just a little bit more than I needed to so I can kind of but don't don't skimp here on our tree trunks go ahead and bring them up but I don't need to bring them up higher because these this is the top of the trees right here right in here and this would be actually it's more like that um so all right i'm just going to and these aren't really spaced any particular way it seems like like i was kind of looking at them but they are kind of coming down to about like that so i need to kind of keep that in mind and bring my tree trunks that are in front right here down They're following that line because I covered all of that up with my. I'm kind of just laying these in roughly at first. 
first here, and then I'll fix them up. And at the bottom of the trees, we're seeing just a little bit of a foot. So it's going to well, not that much. But just a little bit of a foot coming out. And we will make sure that that's dark. And then I'm just going to kind of use just a little bit of color from my brush and just kind of push that out. So there's like a little bit of a shadow with those trees come off a little bit of a darker area and then we'll we'll probably add some more highlights here but that little bit of shadow kind of just grounds it And I'm kind of letting the branches sort of fade out. So I'm kind of dry brushing as I'm coming up into that area because they're going to kind of get um, covered by leaves and things. So I don't want them too solid. Just make it easier to cover them up if I kind of have them a little bit faded at the top. So I'm just kind of lifting just before branch ends so I get kind of some and I should have brought that yellow up here I'm noticing right here there's not enough yellow I didn't bring my understory up high enough right there your understory the under part of the tree interesting I don't know if that's the right term. I think it is. I think you've been reading way too much. <laughs> you haven't heard that word before? Uh, no. Okay. But you know me. You know, I'm the under part of the tree. Hmm. Pretty sure. Look it up. Google it. Oh, I'm gonna, and I'll be wrong. I know, but I'm gonna feel better about myself for looking it up. <laughs> Underlying layers of vegetation in a forest or wooded area, <clears throat> especially trees and shrubs growing between forest canopy and the forest floor. Okay, so, so it would it's be all, down here. Yeah, it's all It'd like the, on the ground. We call the small bushes and trees below okay. the, the taller ones. Um, so while the word was I'm correct, it was improperly wrong. used. <laughs> Minus seven points. Okay, well, whatever this under part is. So the understory would be down here on the ground. Well, I'm glad you looked that up because I've probably been using it wrong. All right, again, I'm just going to blur that out a little bit. And you got all these people brainwashing, washed into agreeing with you in chat. And so you're all wrong, too. <laughs> Just let you know. I do think that, the, I, I think that, look look at alternate definitions, because I'm pretty sure it can mean the the under part of the. But I can't. I, I just shamed everybody. I, I, I can't. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Hold on. Let me, let me go into the Merriam-Webster. 
because they always have more than one definition for it. It may not be the main definition, but I'm pretty sure that. No, that's the only definition there is. Okay. All right. It's the trees and shrubs between the forest canopy and the ground cover. Which we don't have any in our picture. And why it's count, called understory, I have no clue because it I mean, has nothing to do with trees. I mean, I would think it would be like a subplot to a, to a story, the understory. I'm not sure. What so you're now I can, about. I now I can tell the forest your understory is showing. Cover up your understory. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about, but. <laughs> Getting some white here. I'm just, I missed a little spot of my background green here, so I'm just kind of adding that back in. It's a lot harder to do once it's already <laughs> there. So, okay, there we go. And this is probably not that big right there. In that burnt sienna. Tap in around the bottom of my tree there. Kit fits pickles tummy's rumbling over there. Is he in here? Mm -hmm. That's right back here. Yeah. And cashmere's in here too. We need to do <laughs> animal cam. All the animals in the studio today. Spencer came home to watch them for us to keep them quiet, and they're all in here with us, napping. Like perfect angels. Like, we would never squeak toys or make noises while you're. <laughs> you hear if it's a stomach? It's growling. Sleepy Saturday afternoon. Hanging out with mom and dad in the studio. Okay. One side done. Let's do the other side. Again. And right off this is where they sort of start. There's going to be some stuff coming down in front of them, so. These are big trees and they're so close together that these ones back here kind of form these like large blocks of color. So I'm kind of spreading them out a little bit more than they are in the photograph just so that we have a little bit more definition, but they're actually pretty close together in the photo. They're blocking out all the light back here. So it's the beginning of the month. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's time for 
Patreon. Yeah, we've had a lot of people signing up today. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you so much. So at the time of this show, it's the beginning of October, and so if you sign up now, you get the whole month. Yes. And you get access not only to this month's stuff at that level, but you also get access to everything at that level back to February 2017. Mm -hmm. So that's hundreds of traceables, dozens and dozens of bonus video contents. So, Yeah, and if I was selling them on, you know, uh, individually, you know, each one of the traceables would be a dollar or more, and you get them all, all for, for $2. $2. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's a pretty good deal. And if you go to a I'm paint party... A bit of, uh, magenta just to make this darker. What? And if you go to a paint party, it's like... 40, oh, yeah. 60 right, exactly. plus dollars. Yeah. Or you can get. And you're rushed. Right. And this you can rewind and <laughs> watch mm-hmm. at your leisure mm-hmm. and drink as much wine as you want. Yeah. Nobody's w- going to judge you. So wine is not included in the subscription. <laughs> it's BYOB. <laughs> <clears throat> but, you know, have at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't guarantee your results. <laughs> Oh, results will definitely vary. <laughs> but yeah, we've got for the $2 level, you get the traceables for this. So if you don't want to draw, you can just trace your design on to your canvas and go. Um, and then if you uh, want a little bit more instruction, you can do the five dollar level, which are once a month extra bonus videos. They're a lot more in depth than the ones I do in YouTube, just because YouTube doesn't doesn't care if you do a two hour video or a five hour video. They're gonna pay you the same. So you know, mm-hmm. depending on how many people watch it, you know, obviously and. That kind of thing. So it's, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but it doesn't pay to do a long video on YouTube, and they usually don't do as well. Um, YouTube doesn't promote those longer videos. 20-minute videos are about where YouTube likes us, you know, art videos to be, so that's why you see a lot of the sped-up videos. But I just don't, one, I don't like editing, and two, I don't think you learn much from those. I think it, you learn more by seeing things and seeing mistakes like that. And, you know, that wouldn't be in a, a video that was sped up. So Right, how to fix a water spot. Right, exactly. So I'm just, and then you get to t- hear about our dogs and mm-hmm. stuff too. So you're, you know, it's a win-win. <laughs> and, you know, it's, and it's all because of the patrons that make right. these free videos for everybody else yes. worth yes. it. So we really appreciate the support mm-hmm. and love that we get from people each month. Yeah. Yes, it does. We've been able to upgrade our equipment. So if you watch our older videos before <laughs> Patron, so any of the videos before 2017 and then watch the newer ones, you will you will be thanking our patrons too it, because it's amazing the difference. I was going through the videos a couple weeks ago. It was painful. Yeah. I will I say. Know. I mean, and, and I was part of them, creating them. And wow, bless you all. I know. For, for sticking around through that. <laughs> yep. Sound was bad, videos, quality wasn't great. I mean, we're not the slickest channel out there for sure. No. But wow, we are so far ahead of what we used to be. Yeah. Much, much, much better. And that's due to our patrons. So, And then um, for $10 level, the $10 a month level, you get all of that plus a Facebook group for critiquing and things so if you're working on something and you want to critique i don't have time to do it in my other groups anymore i used you know another facebook group that's public and or you know people used to email me and anymore i'm just i hate being like that but i'm just like i don't have time i literally Mm -hmm. don't so they're basically that's a downside of of having such a large channel and Mm -hmm. and being successful like that yeah, I so, can't comment on everything right. anymore. I just don't have time. So I hate it, but it's just the way it, you know. For your sanity. 
yeah, exactly, <clears throat> to be able to have a day off and not be constantly on social media and answering emails and stuff. I've kind of had to set boundaries. So that's one way of doing that for me is I have that group and that's where I do critiques. So if you want that, that's kind of the, the way to access my opinion. There's lots of people out there that have opinions though. So <laughs> I'm not saying my opinion is, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do it just for that. <laughs> But, and and you um, notice there is no level that has my opinion in it because it's not really worth anything. <laughs> we probably have to pay you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and again, you know, at the billion dollar level, I come to your house and mow your yard one time. So <laughs> sign up now. There's there's several slots still open. <laughs> is it is it worth it, Mark? Is it? Well, I mean, I was thinking like Elon or Bill or Jeff or somebody. Would Pretty have. sure they don't have time to be watching YouTube on the weekends. And not time to mow their yard, so hello. <laughs> true, See, true. Yeah. I mean, Alice. I mean, I think Alice would, would need her Alice. yard mode. Walmart. Ah. Uh, Walton. Got it. Well, they're closer, so that would be mm -hmm. more easier. Yeah. I mean, I could just put the lawnmower in the back of the truck and drive up there real quick. Right. Okay. I am using the unbleached titanium now, a little bit of the yellow oxide. And I'm just going to highlight some of these tree trunks very lightly, just on this one side. Remember we said our light's coming from this side, so these sides of the trees, just a little bit of light. Just kind of skipping around here, dry brushing, very light touches. Getting a little bit of unbleached titanium for these ones that are closer to us that have got more detail visible. There we go. And then I can get some of that burnt umber and just kind of go over some of these areas, the transition between the light and the dark. So burnt umber is going to kind of be our kind of middle value color-ish. Not as dark as what we started out with. Okay, that looks good. Do a little bit on this one. These ones aren't as obvious, so there's maybe just a little bit at the bottom. Just a slight bit, not as dark. Because these are all, these don't have access to the sunlight that these ones do. This has this open area over here that the light's penetrating through and these ones have these, the canopy over them. So they're not, they're more sheltered. These guys are like me in middle school and my friends would be like, can we, let's go watch a rated R movie. And I'm like, no, I can only watch. So they're sheltered. <laughs> that was me. I was got teased. <laughs> Mama wouldn't let me watch stuff. And I get it now, but at the time it wasn't very fun. <laughs> alternate definition <laughs> okay there we go so we got some nice nice stuff going on there and so now let's go ahead and do our bigger trees so I'm going to go ahead and use the three inch version here and get some water and a little bit of the Hello, Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow light, and a little bit of the turquoise. So I've got kind of a light green yellow. And I want to be able to, that looks good. 
I want to be able to cover those tree branches, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. That will make sure that I can cover the brown tree branches without having to Sienna and green. Okay, so I've got a little bit darker color here too. I'm noticing I need it a little bit darker back here. Okay, there we go. And when you're using this brush, you kind of need to um, use the tip. So I don't. Um, load it too heavily with paint and then you can use the tip to direct where the paint goes. There's a whole section in here that's kind of a greenish color so I'm going to go ahead and start there. This one that's back 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 is going to be lighter so I'm going to add some white to that. So this area right in here that's the under or the upper area of my trees that's catching the light. It's gonna have some white. The light green. get some Indian yellow hue and cadmium yellow light here. Go. So I just want to be able to just kind of tell just a little bit that that's different. So if you can't tell, we can get a little bit of burnt sienna, cadmium, yeah, there we go. And just add a little bit to that, just at the bottom of those, so that we can see that there's a little separation there between that underside of the branches there that we were seeing, whatever it's called. Some of them kind of come lower over the top of the tree trunks there. Just make sure that if you've got some coming over the top of the tree trunks that it is solid enough to cover. I don't like that. There, I covered too much. Solid enough to cover the, the tree trunks without showing through. So, and you can add a little bit of white if you're having trouble with that. So just add a little bit of white. And you kind of need it fairly thick paint because you want to be able to just do it in one, you know, one dab. So if you've got your paint sort of thick on your brush, it'll help. I don't have a ton of paint globbed on here because I want it to be, um, be able to separate. You know, if you have too much globbed on here, your bristles won't separate at all for you. So kind of tap it down, but, you know, get the thicker part, like right, it, right up in here so that I can just very lightly tap and it'll come off. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So... So now we've got this light green here. We can kind of tap over that green that's dried now. And that brings this tree that's in the foreground closer and covers over a little bit of that. It's very, uh, yellow is a tricky color, I would have to say. So this is a challenging one because your values are not dark. When you've got a darker color that you're working with, so say if these were red, these areas would be almost black. But because it's yellow, our, we have no lighter value to go to. You know, our yellow is like here. 
So our lightest value is going to be the bright yellow. And our darkest values are going to be somewhere in here. So when you've got a color like red, you can go you can go super bright pink, you know, in or like an orangey bright yellow, uh, yellow red, and be, you know, in these values here. And then like your deepest areas would be black-ish, you know, but very dark. So color like red or something like that, you've got the whole value scale to use. But um, because you're starting here, you know, your base color would be like in here. So you've got all of this to work with and all of this to work with. With yellow, you're you're starting here. So you've got no place to go with your highlights. Um, and you can go darker, but your even your dark areas are not, unless you've got really, really contrasted light. Um, like over in here, we've got some like super dark greens that are going to be kind of in here, but we're still not going all the way to this dark, darkest value. And so that's why you kind of have a little bit of trouble uh, I do, at least, you know, I find the yellow a little bit trickier to work with because you don't have as many values to go to. So you have to work with color and, um, you know, really be kind of strategic about where you place your light values and dark values. So like in here, I'm going to put in some darker values, even though they're not in our photograph, it'll just help us have a little bit more contrast when I put my lighter yellows on top. And there's a little bit of this. So a little bit of burnt sienna with the yellow here. All the way up to the top of the canvas there. Okay, and then this area over here has got our darker greens. I'm gonna get some green with my, and I added burnt sienna to it. Greens and yellow, burnt sienna. And got way too much paint globbed on my brush right here. But see how that's gonna go over. It's got a little bit of that yellow tone, so but these are green in our photograph, so I'm not too much about it. These trees haven't turned yet. See that? Okay. And I'm going to go darker because I'm looking at my reference photo and I see, and even in here, it's a little bit darker than I have it. So, but I've got a place to work. I'm, I don't want to go too dark too fast because it's harder to pull back, get that yellow on top of that darker. It's really hard. So I'd rather kind of start out light and work towards that. Okay. So there's some here. And then these ones over here are going to be this color too. I'm going to just be kind of going in lines almost there. Like that. And I need my darker, my yellows over here. So I'm going to get some yellow. And let's go ahead and get a little bit of orange. I haven't added any of that in. The orange will help warm it up and create a prettier yellow. Okay, almost said green there. <laughs> and this area is much darker, so using this yellow and green and orange all together here to create these lines. fill in all of this with this light yellow green not worried too much about it because most of this can be covered up
a little bit of orange with the yellow and Indian yellow hue here. Oh, God, it scared me. Holy crap. Wow. It's, it's pickled this side and you want to go out. Okay, and then over here, it's a little bit lighter, so I'm going to get my cadmium yellow light and a bit of that green. Color. Do kind of a limey green under here. Make sure the tops of those trees have foliage coming down over them. Pretty, pretty. Okay, I'm going to use that lime, limey green again. Use some of that in here. And these kind of crisscross here, so there's a V, but it's getting crisscrossed with all of this greenery and such. some of that cadmium yellow light. I'm just going to use it along this side. This side's getting lots of light because it's got an opening in those trees. Just right up in there. A little bit down here too. Okay, so now the trick is going to be to create individual trees or at least kind of the semblance of some individual trees here. Clean that out really good. And I'm gonna make this a little bit darker in here. Clean that out and dry that out as much as I could. I'm gonna make this a little bit darker up in here. Give me some contrast to work with. There we go. This is nice and dark all through here. All right. So this side is lighter than the other. This thing is making noises every time I know what is making the noise there's something rubbing somewhere it's driving me crazy that noise just keep hearing it in my every time I paint something did you find it Was it? I moved this table. Ah, uh, you moved that table away from it. It's probably the edges of the tables rubbing against each other. Okay, thank you. It's been driving me crazy. <laughs> it's just like every time I do it. <laughs> and I, <laughs> it's like, oh my god, make it stop. Okay, so I'm realizing I need more of my tree trunks up here. Too, so I'm going to go ahead and do that before I do. I've got my one round again. Okay. And make it more of my tree trunk color with the burnt umber and brown. And we'll be putting, you know, other colors over this, so it's not, we're not 
it's not the final, but this is this will help because we'll again it's kind of like when we did this part under here and then put the color over the top. It kind of helps push push our perspective. So now we've got a third little layer. In fact, I'm gonna put a little color right here. side. Just doing random sticks and twigs and things up in here. Don't have to connect anything, so we're not going to really. This is going to be covered up. But need yep, need a little bit of that. Just touches of this dark in here, here and there. And they should get smaller as they go back here. Some of these are coming down from this direction. I probably should be using a smaller brush for this, but I'm being lazy right now. I don't want to clean my another brush. Just a few little branches there. Do a couple more in here. Yellow burnt sienna, a little bit of turquoise. I 
gonna tap over wherever I'm seeing the ends of these. Kind of helps separate them a little bit. I'm getting these like little round circles here because this brush is so small. So if you're having trouble with that, you may need to switch to a bigger brush. Don't want little round circles everywhere. All right, getting some of the burnt sienna and yellows, the two yellows. We've got this lime green and this bright yellow behind, so we're we able to see this. If we don't have those colors behind, this would just, you know, be dark on dark. So make sure you've got those colors in there. It'll help this make sense. And I'm darkening up this area in here so that I can put that lighter, lighter yellow in over the top, and it'll really pop. Just don't think I had it quite dark enough at first. All right. I'm going back to this brush here. A little bit bigger version. green on here I think. Let me get a little bit of the unbleached or the glazing look would just make it more fluid. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna go lightly with this at first and just try to build up some contrast in here and I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of burnt umber in my Turquoise, a little bit burnt sienna. Turquoise. A little bit of yellow. So I've got a nice dark green too. No, I wasn't paying attention to what you've been talking about. Surprise. Mm -hmm. Somebody's asked a question. They would like okay. to know. If you mix your regular paints with the glazing liquid, does that help them make them become more transparent? Yes, it does. It does. Yep. It also helps the flow. And that's why I added it here, just for, because I didn't want to dunk my water in my brush, or my brush in my water, because it could soak up too much. So adding just a little bit of this helps kind of do what water would do in that case. So that's why I used it there not to make it transparent. I didn't use enough to make it transparent. I don't want it transparent. I just want it a little bit more flow, flowy. Does it make fluid? It's weird. So, related because it's paint, mm -hmm. uh, there's a new Slow Mo Guys video out where he put paint on a round disc mm -hmm. and then spun it really fast with a drill. And it's not new. I've seen, I've seen that. Right? Well, it just came out like two days ago. Okay, well, I've seen one like it. And he did it mostly with like craft paints, you know, from, bo from the bottle, very fluid. Mm -hmm. And then he did it with acrylic paints. Uh huh. And you can definitely tell the difference on how it moves off the uh -huh. disc between the acrylic and the. You the mean craft. heavy body acrylics? Uh, he said acrylic, so I don't remember if he said a heavy body or not. But anyways, it was quite interesting. the interesting show. 
So yes, Angela's from the future. <laughs> she went. In, she time traveled, saw the video, it. came back. I saw some. Well, it wasn't that. It was something they were they did that had acrylic paint spun. Mm. Maybe it wasn't them. Maybe it was somebody different. But I watched something like that. They, they've did. They've done several things with paints and <sighs> mm-hmm. and uh, colored powders and things like that. So, mm-hmm. anyways. It was yeah. It was very oh, very interesting how it just you know flowed off the and at two thousand frames per second. It's I would think cool that these these would clump a little bit. They would come off in strings probably, mm-hmm. and the acrylic paints would splatter more. I would guess, or the craft paints mm-hmm. would splatter more maybe. Yeah, it was very liquid, so it just like flowed off almost like water. Mm-hmm. You know the mm-hmm. crafty ones, but interesting. Okay, so now that we have that dark ender here, getting a little bit of white, my yellow, two yellows here, yellow, Indian yellow hue and cadmium yellow light. And I'm using the 3 8 inch blender because I feel like I can get a little bit more control in here. There's just tighter areas. I don't want to do too much. I probably should have saved this green for after I did this. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> We probably just bumped up their subscribers. You know, they only got fourteen point two million. Right, so right. They Maybe need, they'll give us a heads up. They need us to call them out for give them a shout out so they can mm-hmm. get some more subs. Mm-hmm. Not. <laughs> Maybe they'll shout us out. You just like leave a comment and say, "Hey, we heard about you on Angela's show." And yeah. Be like, Who's Angela? Exactly. They'll look me up. That ain't happening. But. Then they can come and film a slow mo of you painting. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be nerve wracking having somebody. Here, I'll do it right now with my phone. Uh-huh. Mm. And a little bit of bright orange there. Or bright. Sienna. That's the color. just putting the white because the white will help make it easier to do my layers then I can go over that covers up Super slow mo.
and some white with this green here for this area right here. darker trees up higher up here. Cashmere seems bored there. What? Cashmere seems bored. Cashmere, did he wake you up? Cashmere. She's like half, she's asleep. She's asleep with her eyes open. Poor baby girl. <laughs> Daddy woke you up. She's like, what the heck? Where am I? It's like me when I wake up. It's like, what day is it? <laughs> Do I have to paint today? Somebody posted <laughs> yesterday on Facebook, like, don't you hate it when you wake up from a nap so good that you think you missed a bus? the school bus <laughs> but it's Sunday and you're 32 <laughs> <laughs> that's good very true okay so may have to do these branches multiple times to you know over add you know add them take them away cover you know add them again kind of I need to stop though because I'm getting very nitpicky about it I tend to do go these, these rabbit holes try to get it just like the photo instead of just getting it close enough and moving on okay what time is it oh yeah I need to move on because I gotta get the lady done Okay, so I'm gonna use this kind of light, light uh, green. It's got the yellow. It's got all my colors in it, just about, and a little bit on the green side. The white to help cover. I'm just gonna kind of find the tops of these dark areas here and add a little bit of light to them. right up in here on a really bright yellow. Let me clean my brush out. Get cadmium yellow light, a little bit of white. And I've got a lot of paint going on right now, so it's like really my canvas here. Just the blender. Just right in there. And a little bit coming out right here. Now, does it matter which brush you hold in your non-painting hand while you're doing this? 
I've got this ready in case I need to do any mm. more tree trunks. Okay, all right. On standby. Okay. <laughs> Getting some of my green here. The yellow. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. It's kind of a light sagey green here. It's got some of that yellow in it. That's a pretty color. I like that. Find some of these branches again just for the last time. This time I'm gonna try to poke them in between so I don't have to go over any of this again. Keep them small. over here all right let's use the color here to tap in underneath our trees this is that light sagey green Not as much of it on this side, but a little bit. And then... Let's tap in some of our... I'm just going to kind of get a lot of different colors on here. Try not to over blend them. here and I'm just going to tap in little leaves and I'm using kind of a brown yellow color let's use a little bit of the unbleached titanium to brighten it up some of them are bright and kind of laying them down uh, horizontally so they're laying flat so they're not round leaf shapes we're not having to do a ton of detail here just kind of trying to scatter some little and really only gonna go about halfway up with this because farther away we're not seeing these individual leaves we're just seeing like lots of little random dots kind of together very tip of it to that's what I was going to use the fan brush for but I'm going to just use this use the very tip of it to do very teeny tiny leaves 
You can do clusters of leaves that are kind of stuck together there. Get the unbleached titanium and go through and highlight some of these or add some strategic ones here and there. Really catching the light. we've already done and adding a little highlights to them. There we go. Okay. Let's paint the lady. I'm going to start on her legs. Get that ultramarine blue here. A little bit of burnt umber. Go really dark. This is where I really wish I'd added black to my list because I kind of need black <laughs> to make it more opaque. There's her knee. need black because I need it. A, um, opaque blue and both of my colors are too transparent there. I'll have to do like three cuts if I don't just add a little bit of black. <laughs> comes in whoops I gotta give her a little thicker thigh there sorry it's in there and then there's this area right behind the knee I'm just going to have to let that sit because it's too thick to add any more paint at this point. I'm going to use the yellow oxide, a little bit of burnt sienna.
first layer is always a little awkward. It just looks weird. So kind of know that going in. It's going to get better. It just needs another coat. Paint. Can try to darken this up a little bit. Get that burnt umber. It's just about black, so I'm going to get a little bit of that black, a little bit of burnt umber. Just the slightest little bit of highlight on it. Now, oh, what I did was I didn't put in the well, maybe need to bring her leg out a little bit. I think that's the problem. The boot's supposed to angle in a little bit there instead of out. So I just need a little bit of that gray from our foreground. Or from the ground, I mean. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Hopefully you won't have to do this. I just didn't get my ground right up to her boot there, so I was having some problems. I had 
paint on my fingers that I transferred on there. <laughs> I need to clean my fingers off if I'm going to be wiping. out a little bit, not that much. Let's do that again. Here we go. And that's wider than the boot, just slightly. On either side. This is the one round that you're using? Yes. Thank you. Okay. You're doing amazing, babe. Thanks. Just let me know when you want me to take over. You ready? Yeah, I can. I can probably knock out the rest of this real quick. Probably a couple less details, but. just a tiny bit of the turquoise that'll make it a little bit more of a denim color here and I'm just gonna kind of dry brush in this area where her pant leg creases the knee creases back there a little bit on this leg and then just slightly dry brush the the separation between those legs very light. It doesn't have to be real obvious. And then get kind of a couple highlights on the cuff there, or the bottom of the ankle, and that's it. Okay. Then on her jacket, we got that camel color. I'm going to use the unbleached titanium and just highlight this side. the burnt sienna with that burnt umber to give it a little bit of a warmer color in my shadow area I had just the burnt umber but it's not that cold it's a little bit warmer brown a little bit of that camel or the yellow oxide color to make it more of a camel color Just basically giving it a second coat here, that's all. Everything just needs a little bit smoothing out. This just helps smooth out the colors and values and everything. So, use that. Princeton and yellow oxide here. And if you're using a paint color that's not as opaque as mine, you know, or as, um, pigmented is, is mine, so if you're using a cheaper quality paint, you may have to do this a couple times to get it to cover, so, do, or more than two, two times, I mean like 
two or three more times. So just kind of know that's normal. It just depends on the quality of paint you're using. My paint covers pretty well. So two coats, two coats is doing just fine. But if you're not using the heavy body acrylics, then you may need a couple more times here to get it to cover. Like highlight there, a little highlight on this side of the jacket here. Well, if I can get it to cover, added some white. There, there, a little bit coming through right here. And a little bit right here where this kind of kicks up right there. And then there's a highlight on the crease. Even that out right there because it's, it's so dark it's making it look like it's puckered right there so smooth out that hip there get some of that burnt sienna actually seeing a little bit of red on her coat right here that burnt sienna will help. I widened her waist a little bit too much. <laughs> right here, it needs to come in a little bit more, but oh well. Alright, so there we go. She's got no, she's got a cinched waist in the photo. So. I just wanted to kind of, I kind of messed up the elbow too, so I need to fix that. This little bit right here is really dark, so right here where her hand goes in her pocket. Okay. Right, let's do her elbow. Or her umbrella, I mean. I don't know why I said elbow. <sighs> Mixing the 
Can we wear light with the, old, the magenta there? Can make a bright red. You could use red instead of these two colors. I expected to be using these somewhere else, but I didn't, so it probably <laughs> would have made more sense to just do one color, but it is what it is now. He's still watching or two hours in <laughs> uh yes Got a few people still watching. <clears throat> yeah we have uh right now about 245 okay yeah now i don't know how many of those have fell, fallen asleep because your soothing voice <laughs> but at least they're uh logged in hey thanks guys i noticed our numbers are not quite back up to pre pre-COVID fall numbers yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think people are still uh, backlashing. We had yeah. great big, you know, great numbers all through COVID because everybody was locked down. And then all summer long, we've just had hardly anybody at our live streams <laughs> compared to normal numbers, you know. Yeah. It's just we can been, tell everybody's out traveling yeah, and visiting and exactly. doing things. Finally yeah. doing things for the first time. So. That, well, they should be in their house. Trying not to take it personally but they should be it. at their house on the couch watching youtube <sighs> i don't understand these people no. they got to get their priorities straight <laughs> hey i'm glad glad we've 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 fared better than most people with because you have incredible fans they they are really sweet all right so this lighter color if you add if you add too much white to a red, you're going to get pink, obviously. So if you add a little bit of yellow, counteracts the pinkness, pinkiness, and makes it more of a salmon, orangey red, and that's what you want. Here. So these parts that are catching the light. And then I'll get a little bit more of that darker color and just do the seams with that. Going over this light color a little bit while it's still wet, blending it in. We're going to need an umbrella soon. Yes, it's going to rain today. It's it's knocking at the door. We got a thunderstorm mm -hmm. on on the doorstep. We need to make sure that Fitz goes out before it starts. He's out there with Spencer somewhere. So is he? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, remember he woke you up. That's right. Probably not the only one. He woke up with that bark. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for those who were napping. <laughs> Probably woke you up. <laughs> okay. dark crease right here all the way up and then right here where it meets the lighter part it's got a little bit of a transition so just kind of smoothing those out a little bit 
And then this part here is probably do three to four values of red. So you're gonna have a bright, bright red along the edges and you're gonna have this really light salmon pink. And you're gonna have kind of a transition color between the two that kind of is in a lot of these areas that are in between this color, kind of halfway. I think our, sound, our power just went out. That's what that is. I think, right? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. There are surges. Uh-huh. Just working. <laughs> Almost done here. Well, this has been fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I've I've never painted a woman with an umbrella before, so I've done lots of landscapes and things similar to this, but the umbrella part is pretty fun. I enjoy it. I've done a couple of umbrellas before, but I really like how, you know, each little section kind of changes color just a little bit. So back in here, I'm going to use a little bit more of the magenta right here to get a little bit richer deeper red. My paint is so thick on my brush, it's not coming to a point for me. There we go. And then these parts here are kind of that mid-range red. It's not quite the lightest and it's not the dark here. So kind of a mid-tone.
It is amazing how just different tones of the same color give such a 3D effect. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing that's just a flat canvas. But holy moly. Yeah, it's... It's the magic of painting. Okay, and then I want to... I'm going to use a smaller brush here. I want to really emphasize those creases. So I'm going to get the magenta, a little bit of black. And I'm going to line them, but I'm going to dab it. So I'm going to just kind of Yeah, so it's not a hard line. It'll make it look a little bit more natural. We are going to get nailed with a heavy thunderstorm. I can just tell the way we're getting all these surges and things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's hitting somewhere. It's trekking just north of us, but we're going to catch the tail of it. Oh, good. We're We're about done here, so. can hear those trees out there. The leaves fall. Yeah, Dover's getting a big red blob on it. Mm. Okay, using some of this in my... Under here. And then let's get the highlight color. Come on. Sometimes you just have to get white and use what's left in your brush because it just doesn't want to mix. Looks like a filter applied to a to a photo. What does? Your painting looks amazing. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna get a little bit of white, just make that little highlight in the center there. It's a little bit too bright. Me. Said no one of Mark ever. <laughs> it's a little too bright. Mm-hmm. Said no one of Mark ever. <laughs> leave off the strap. I don't think you need it. Yeah. You can put it in there if you want it, but yeah. It could be it maybe it was on the front side and we just don't see it. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Nice. All right, I'm going to get a little darker up here. I'm seeing like a little bit of a darker right here. Coming down. A little bit off of this one. And then I'm going to use the blender to help blend that out because it's get that medium tone color. Just blend that out a little bit and just smushes that paint around. Okay. I think I need a little bit darker right there. And then we should be done. Get a little bit of that darker red right here. Get both of the reds there. Just a little bit of that dark black color to You can feel the cool dampness. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. The ground is not actually wet in this photo. I just, I just realized it's not actually raining this day. It doesn't look damp. So if, it, if you wanted to do it damp, you might darken up the ground quite a bit. You know, a little bit more than what we have in this. This is a dry, dry ground. Brighter, yeah, brighter. Wait. There's like a bright little spot on each of these little corners here. And go back to the. Just making very, very small edits here, but it makes a difference in the realistic. Qualities there. Okay. Looking at her jacket again, her jeans. Everything looks pretty good, I think. Yeah. That's fun. And while you've got your small brush out, if you want to add some more branches to your trees, you can do that. The smaller branches will be easier to do with this too round here.
a lot of Well, she does look realistic. Well, looking at her, <laughs> I just so looked away and then looked back at her in the scene. Just like, you, know, yeah. you know when they take a video and then they do just that kind of like a a painterly chalky filter over it, right? Very lightly. I mean, it looks like it's like in the middle of that. That's cool transition from realism to that, and it's just really that's neat. Very amazing. Thank you, hon. All right. Well, I think we did it. Let's uh, stop there. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. Let me sign it. And, uh, whoops, no, I don't want to use that one. I'll keep using the <laughs> old one here. Let me. PBO marker. The only thing I don't like about these. Is they're acrylic markers, which works great, but they kind of spit a little bit when they catch on the canvas texture. So I'll end up with little stringy things on them, but it's all right. All right, there we go. We're done. Yay, that turned out really cool. I'm happy. Um, I think that I probably could have gone a little darker on some of my um, some of my areas up in here. I'm seeing, you know, some areas maybe like a little bit more of the tree trunks showing here and there um if you just do it like a wash or something yeah let me i'm just gonna try to add a few little so if you're new to angela's channel when she says she's done don't don't ever fall for it <laughs> ever never i used enough. to when i first started but pfft. well what happens is i i say i'm done because I'm done with whatever it is I think I need to finish or like that I think I'm done. But then I stop and I look at the photograph and really um, look at the reference photo or the, the finished painting from, from a distance. So I look at the monitor to see what it looks like on the monitor. And then oftentimes I'll see things that I don't see when I'm looking just at the canvas. Does that make sense? So stop and go you know, go out of the room for a minute and then come back in and look at your painting and you'll see things that you missed when you're just sitting in front of it, you know, for two hours or whatever. Um, it's, you know, it's really important to do that and probably to do it more often, you know, than just the one time, you know, at the end. Um, do it multiple times while you're painting and it'll help you really stay on track and see things that you're missing, so. All right. That's better, I think. Just needed a little bit deeper. You know, there's a lot of lot of green and not a lot of dark in between. So I think that that's, that's better. I'm sure that there's things that I could have done differently, but uh, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, get a little bit of the yellow and just bring it down here over the top of that tree right there and there. So a reminder everyone once again about patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art, traceables, bonus content, all that good stuff. Go check it out. Yeah, next weekend will be our bonus video. We're going to be painting, uh, what are we painting? Oh, a uh, landscape. Yeah. All right. Well, be nice. Very good. Another one of the Lohi, Lori Lohi paintings Ooh. or images. So it'll be a nice one. I always like his stuff. 
Oh, hold on, please hold. What? A super chat? We just had a super chat coming. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't even ready. Don't have the disco lights, but it's all right. This one from Barbara, and it has a an applauding cat. Oh, bravo, thank you, Barbara. Barbara. Yeah, I think it's a cat. That. Maybe it's a fox. <laughs> It's some kind of a critter. To work on your animal. Yeah, my animals. meme animals. I'm not very good. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today, and we appreciate you. Uh, if you want to check out my newsletter, you can go to my website, thinkflart.com, and uh, sign up for that, and it'll send you once a week. We send out a newsletter talking about what we're doing, and you know all that kind of good stuff. So can stay up with what is happening if you're interested in that otherwise just subscribe and if you click click the little bell icon on this next to the subscribe it'll send youtube will send you a reminder of the videos that we're working on so when we start our live streams it sends you a little reminder email so you won't miss our live streams if you want to check those or you know hang out with us during live during our shows all righty um i'm going to one more thing sorry i keep saying i'm done but i'm not i need to kind of cover over this a little bit right there just there we go all right now i'm done because i was i was missing that um perspective i had too much of my greenery up high or my not greenery but my tree mm -hmm. tree branches and things or tree um foliage sorry my, i have no words right no now words are done no words but you get what i'm saying all right there we go yay we're done thanks guys have a great rest of your weekend we'll see you next time bye <laughs>